seconds, which Team Liquid were able to win 13 to 10. The question is, can they replicate it? I don't know, because Kiko had a life game on that map, right? He was 37 and 16, and you can't rely on the performance yeah. every single time. And given that it was so close and you don't have that high flying performance, it really could mean Koi has a real chance in this series. A 2-0 chat might have been on a little bit of uh, too much hopium, voting heavily in favor of Team Liquid, but it truly is anyone's game on this elimination matchup in kickoff as a push towards the B site has already taken place. Spike now only making its way towards that area and Camo is very, very deep into this B site. I mean, we saw this before. Camo loves taking advantage of this space, especially with there only being one angle here towards mid to watch. Uh, Info has been spotted. Okay. But he also spotted out too. And Yampi's right above him. And TP out. Back to safety. It's all about biding that time, right? Because for Team Liquid, they don't know if anyone was pushed up nope. with Camo. Could have been anybody else as well in the cubby, but they've cleared it now, and now they can focus onto the site, take that walk and do a lot, and it's going to interrupt from anybody doing any damage to the person defusing. Mystic still on it, but nobody in yellow to stop him. He still stuck it, and that's going to be Kiko to hold down the line. All was required is to hold that stick on the deep dues, and that's the round for Team Liquid, with no one from the team still alive. I love the creativity with that wall from Mystic, the perfect angle to get that defuse down, and sure, there were gaps in it, but not big enough for Koi to even push back through either really leaving them to funnel over towards yellow where the rest of Team Liquid had their eyes and weapons set and drawn in that area. You can see how nicely oh done that was. If, it, if he had a fraction of a second, Starkso or even, I don't know, anyone could have dealt with him there. I think it was Starkso and Shadow, both with the opportunity to do so. Just half a second, maybe less. Fortunately, you can't turn back the clock. Nope. Just the fear of even trying to push up to, through that angle, too. Like, they did manage to fit in at the end, but, man, it's a, it's a narrow fight that you don't want to be taking as we head into the next round. You have camo on. The outlaw is what it looks like here. Oh, no, that's just yeah. a marshal. No, no, it is no, the outlaw. Okay, both, I see the yeah, double barrel there. Ones. Kiko has one as well. They're chilling. My eyes are bad, man. That's all right. It's okay to be old. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. All right, let's. Definitely let's not the oldest one I'm, on the I'm, broadcast. I, yeah, I'm definitely done. Never going to be casting with Ash again. But for now, Koi, they've settled into this A site push. Uh, Kiko holding oh. this line of fire will rip Gravino's face to pieces. Camo, that's so sneaky, and that's his low, and that could be a free upgrade. And he's trying to play the time. Oh, he's healed up, but barely Camo gets the kill in time. Team Liquid, though, are on left. top as they've gotten the rest of the kills on this A site. They push simultaneously. Shadow finds a pick onto Yampi, and there's not much left for Koi to do. No, look how far up Mystic is pushed. Especially given that there's this ready. flank in the making. And there you go. 2 0 for Team Liquid. Nice start there. Some good map control for Team Liquid to regroup and find there down into that 3v2. Now weapons out, and you can probably hear the crowd chanting in the back as well here for the Stallions. Lots of fans here within the Riot Games Arena down in Berlin, Germany. But we're still frosty in the server. We're still on Icebox. Oh, yes, that we are. Very frosty indeed. Team Liquid warm, though, on their hands as they found themselves two rounds. Koi, on the other hand, have to play catch up, and this is a round to do it. Knight look to aggress early towards its A site. Fake TP, which does alert, uh, alert the, the uh, bells here for Team Liquid. And so dropping back from it. Now leaning over towards this A site here. Quiet creep up from three members of Koi. You've got a three stack on the side of Team Liquid as well. That mid control is entirely in the hands of Yampi. Oh, it's a dry peak and it's a slow one, which allows Yampi oh. to get a double kill. This is not what Koi wanted at all. And Team Liquid have dismantled this attack. Gravino has to play catch up here. The war just delaying them even further. Rotations could potentially come in, but there's one minute to spare, so you can't really afford to rotate it's over, really given that Koi could also do the same. They also want to keep pushing towards A. They don't want to allow Team Liquid to pick up these guns. Crossover. So Mystic! Bad. Clean with it. And Trevino spotted, but not quite too picked up. Enzo instead takes a chunk of health off of himself. 
And Koi double backing. This could potentially be a three and O star for left. Team Liquid. And every second ticking makes it more and more likely. I mean, Kiko just finds so much value with this angle down towards mid. Just cutting off the rotation in full Team Liquid. Know that Koi are stuck over towards A main at this point. And I wouldn't be surprised if Team Liquid went for the chase as well. You've got Yampi on a Sheriff, you've got Kiko on an Outlaw, left. Mystic and Nats both having uh, lesser uh, than optimal weapons to carry over to the next round. Well, Mystic has found himself a Vandal for the upgrade, but the chase will come in and Koi will try and interrupt it. But no, no one's gone in for the chase. Now they will. And Starkster will keep himself alive, <laughs> and barely does so indeed. So rifles, a couple of them carried over for Koi. A couple of them carried over, but a lot left to be desired here. Because they're looking over towards the side of Koi as well. And in these kits, there's no opportunity within your duelist to get some sort of eco ultimate up no. to cycle in, which is, I think, the tough part here. A uh, big trade-off when you have like a, a raise or a jet on your side, like you do in Kiko on the side of Team Liquid. Right there. That TP this time was heard. This time not a fake. So still Team Liquid wary of that position. As Koi looks to push through mid. Kitchen is covered. Koi a little bit more angsty with their movement right now. Of course, it's a bit of a push and pull. Try and draw Team Liquid out. They out kill Drake Utility. Pushing mid, Stark, so unsuccessful with a pick, so it has to drop back. I mean, with rifles available, you've got to see Starkso and Grabinho find kills here. Otherwise, it's all done and lost. And that's exactly what happens. Starkso lose the gun. And that's even an upgrade for Yampi. He'll be happy to take that. Normally, you want numbers with those hero rifles as well. So someone can at least pick it up when you do go down. All hope lies on Grabinho right now as he's close to this fight together with Camo. Takes a ton of health off from that shock dart. Shadow somehow survives. Takes a lot of damage for it. Yeah, this this round is pretty much done unless Koi are able to find some Sheriff kills, especially given that Yampi is on this back line and nobody's checking him. Spray onto the first, Shado's got to turn around, but he won't be able to do so in time. Yampi wants more kills, wants better statistics at the end of this game. It's Enzo with a double to close it all off. No survivors for Koi as Team Liquid grab another round and a four round lead. Hey, still was talking about the momentum that would have been on the side of Poi after yeah. that first map and Team Liquid just shoving that right in their face. They've literally come off of that break. We're angry, you know, they're frustrated. How on earth did they let that map leave them? And this is Enzo putting a lot of uh, emphasis on the morale of this team. Definitely needed. There were a lot of shaking faces by the end of Sunset. So this is exactly the right attitude entering the second map. Aggressive looks that Steel was talking about as well for Team Liquid, not even allowing Koi to really get that hot start on their executions. And now Standing Kiko ahead. cycling up into that operator, watching the long angle this time around towards B. The team, Koi, leaning over towards this A site. So comfortable. You've got Nats in an incredible lurk position. And then the backup of that barrier behind B. him, they'll know if they rotate, rotate over. This A site push, Team Liquid are notified of it. Enzo does call the rest of the team over. And that's exactly what they will do. One left behind, Grabinho on the bottom side of the map, catches off Nat. Massive grab of the Lurk. And numbers advantage for Koi. Okay, but the lockdown's coming in now. And Yampi's able to find the first oh. pick, but the fact that Camo has an upper ground to his advantage Standing brings his ahead. team right back on top, but not for long. Hunter should reuse. No one the spike, but he needs to find a tag. Le careful of the left-hand side. He's got it out. Kiko able to readjust. Shadow shuts down his former teammate, and now there's two left. Quick on the trigger. Shados comes in as well. Koi get themselves on the board. Bait there for Shadow as well to throw out that Hunter's Fury. Sure, looking to maybe try and tag one, but the realistic part of that was to try and bait Team Liquid into pushing forward. And that's what you need. You need your leader lead from the front. You can see so much has been done to get them back in. And then from everything we've seen so far, Koi, all they need is an inch to find themselves a streak of rounds. Okay, Team Liquid still have the advantage though right now. What do we have to work with? Enzo's got the Odin on Placing swamp grenade. this time around. You still have an op in hand here for Kiko as well. Light shield alongside it. Soul holder of the A site. First time he's shifted over from mid and B. I'm 
I mean, for Kiko, it's a waiting game. It's just a matter of time if someone comes to his proximity. And it looks like that might end up being the case. I mean, there's so much early map control here for Team Liquid, right? Again, early Sage Wall that goes out towards B main, uncontested. Then you've got Yampi, a full hold towards this mid side uh, with his utility there on the Killjoy, and Kiko just looking so deep over towards the belt. They're so aware, too, trying to walk the close angle. For sure. Hunter's Fury, use that for Menzo. Eager to find a pick, and he does. Shadow no more. Sova v Sova comes out on top for Team Liquid. Kiko has been blocked off and can't do a thing with the Operator, so Koi do get sight control. So, still, it's Team Liquid under pressure, even though they've got the numbers. They're gonna be pushing forwards. Gravino in this cove, together with a spike plant. Nat is yeah. the one to get a pick, though, but Gravino comes alive on top! Three to his name, but now he needs to get the spike down, and Mystic is there to interrupt it all himself. Okay. Readjustment for Shados trades, it's and it's down to Kiko, the prodigy. On the task again, Shados on the spike plant, but cuts it all off to cut Kiko's head. And Koi doubled it all up. It got scrappy, it got dirty there towards the A site, but Koi survived in that kind of environment. And Grabino with the one to completely turn the fight around here for the team. But because of how close that was, again, tough buy here for both sides. Sure, everything in full for the most part, sacrificing maybe a little bit. And that, that energy utility. from Koi is just yeah. contagious. Well, Barbara, how many times are you going to fall off your seat, mate? Can we get a Barbara chair counter? <laughs> <laughs> we have to. Fake teleport. I'm going to keep track of how many times it happens over the season. But... Out. Okay, Kiko's just walking straight up. He's by himself. He's like, okay. You know what? They haven't really contested mid that much. Uh, at sure. least just close up the gap. He can find some damage with a right-click classic, but Camo not giving him an inch. Nope. Here. And this Would is maybe perfect. expected him to maybe work towards an orb instead, but I mean, Koi tends to be more focused on the extremities anyways, so. And the best case scenario for Ko here is winning this round without using those ultimates. They know they're up against a weaker buy, but you know, if it means that they guarantee a round, I do see them using them. I'll have to see what happens. Oh, the cookie crumples. Yampi at the very least. Oh, on hand. Tricky position here for a Killjoy. Flashed out as well. Ah, yeah. uh, and discovered with that recon ping, but quite not actually going to go and press it. No. Got Shados lurking over towards this A site. The thing is, Team Liquid, Enzo, and Mystic have yet to move an inch. No, they haven't. And the Outlaw can do so much from this distance. And now all of a sudden, Team Liquid might be finding themselves a victory in this round that it just shouldn't be 25 seconds. But Mystic loses himself within the you madness of the war. And Yampi's closed up the distance with the Outlaw. He's going to use it like a shotgun. Mate, we know it's double barrel, but it's not meant for this moment. He doesn't care, though. And he gets out of the lockdown nets together with Yampi, tasked with the 2v2 retake. Got a retake wall to work with here, too. Spike they know planted. one's on site, only just parting the spike, so they know Starkso is right beneath us, but he's able to reposition, and Shados is there to help out. Nat has only got a ghost, but we saw ghost work of su Supreme prior to this match, but it won't be coming in this particular round. Starkso, three kills to his name, comes alive, and puts Koi on three rounds themselves. This post plant's looking so comfortable. Chaining these rounds together here on the side of Koi. Team Liquid started off 4-0. Koi won away from equalizing. The thing is, I don't think this round should have gotten so out of hand for Koi. This got die. way I'm too close for comfort. Oh, yeah. And, and you can see that the heart rate is off the roof here for the coaches of uh, Koi. <laughs> this can't be healthy. I don't know. It absolutely can be. But I mean, uh, all the players, I feel like, do rave about the outlaw and how strong it can be in the right scenarios. Kiko, this angle, tricky, but nobody home. So much information found at the very least. Sneaky, sneaky. That Who's bad. next? There's another guy that's going sneaky, sneaky. That's Camo. Oh, I mean, Gives himself a way of backing, ba uh, backing off. Scoping out the lay of the land here over towards the B site. Nobody home. A lot of information allows the team to just move in. Odin doing a lot, but there's also presence in mid that they need to look out for. Viper's pit, 
perfect for Koi, but they haven't quite gotten the spike down. And Team Liquid looking to contest. They're all nearby apart from Kiko, and they're looking away from. But with an operator in a Viper's pit, definitely not the right weapon for it. Look Shook's at Shadow. Oh my God, Shadow is being so sneaky right now. Is able to find one, but Enzo not able to find the reply just in time. Enzo's oh. a Viper's pit, but it's going to be traded all out. Three versus three. Team Liquid though under pressure in time. Now so here to save the day. The spike wasn't even planted, so it means it's all under control for Team Liquid unless Koi finds a miracle. Grabinho backs off, tries to get the lay of the land, left. figure out where everybody's hiding out, but Kiko has got a waiting game. He's got the operator, and this long distance favors him. Grabinho needs magic, but he cannot find it. Instead, it's Nat to find himself on the board for three times this round, and Team Liquid back into winning ways. Okay, back in the driver's seat here for Team Liquid, shutting down the momentum that Koi were looking to build. Man, this got so tricky. I mean, sure, the Viper's Pit goes down, but just not being able to secure the plant just due to the util dump alone on the side of Team Liquid. It was so rough. And so Team Liquid, uncomfortable. They were comfortable in all that moment. It felt like, at least, especially with Shadow on the flank and the Viper's Pit. I thought, I thought that was all over for Team Liquid, but Nats just did Nats things. He just popped off. <gasps> Look here for this round, though. We're all up. Just a 3 1 1 split. Got the lurk on the other side of the map here from Shados. Mystic's got an angle covered. He knows there's always a gap here he can work with, but. Yeah, he saw Starks a crossover, too. Just looks to fully back up. Not looking to get Swarm, play the numbers to the advantage with that weaponry. And Kiko's just running over with the op. That's Toxic Screen just about to drop. This is not the best case scenario here for Koi. If they get the plant, at least they've got Starkso's ultimate together with the Shadows as well to try and rain them onto Team Liquid. Just waiting for that Toxic Screen to cycle back up here for Rubinho. And it'll definitely shut Kiko's sight line from this one. At least here. they've got Mystic nearby and he can do all the delaying possible 40 seconds and they need to move in quickly before this Toxic what Screen wears off but they're looking to push even further. Kiko might be in trouble. Camo finding an outlaw short onto him, keeping the team alive in this round. It's still a four versus four. Mystic needs to back off. Weird angle on the wall, gets spotted and uh, forced to drop back himself. Still, Koi. They need to get the spike plant, but they're not going for the B site take. They're going all the way around to this A site, given that Shados has cleared out, it out himself. Stex was still doing damage in mid, and there's also the lurk from Yampi trying to yeah, hold it all off, and he's successful in doing so. It's going to be a two versus three here. And secured here for Koi as well. Spike. Look at the timing right now. You've got Yampi wrapping back around. The two players on Koi towards A just have to live. And I don't think they would expect him to be here this quickly. Krabinho not looking in the right direction. He will now to peak. Just spotted him. 40 points of health remaining on him. Shados on the flank. Missed it. Cannot pass even with a ghost on the defuse though. He's not faking it. You've got to peek it here, Krabinho. And that's exactly what he does. A thrifty round from Koi. Keeping Team Liquid at arm's reach. Great timing from Shados. And we saw this last time Team Liquid and Koi played up against each other. Starkso was the one on that hardware pick to run a lot of those fakes, be that distractor, especially when that reckoning was up and draw all the attention of Team Liquid over. Did he say he almost farted? I feel like that's, that's what he said. But that's no, that's not the place for it right now. I feel I feel for bad for Barba if that would be the case. And there'd be quite a smelly situation. But the smelly situation on the server currently is for Team Liquid, right? They were meant to win the previous round. They were meant to build up the streak. But they didn't. I mean... It's a mental game, isn't it? It really is. I mean, it's tense, right? We're into the second map. The decider team that gets eliminated, they go home. They don't have an opportunity to play until after Masters Madrid. It's a couple months from now, until yep. the next time we'd see them. Until stage one. But even the team that wins, they still have to go through that gauntlet of play-ins tomorrow. Not easy. Not an easy journey. Only one of the teams that we, we already saw two qualify into play-ins and only one of them will make it to playoffs. But the fact that they get the opportunity to play in these situations goes to show that they, you know, there's a way for them to back, bounce back in this format of kickoff, right? There's a way for you that you've got to, you've shown you've got potential. It's just learning from your mistakes in a quick time period, bouncing back from them. 
and seeing if you can compete to uh, make your statement on an international level for Masters Madrid. Tough opponents waiting on the other side as well with Team Vitality and Carmine Corp being the ones to qualify earlier today. Very true. Not an easy task. No one said it was. No, but they got to focus here on this match first. Blades for Kiko. Walked all the way up, but look how patient Koi are. And realistically, it's the Blades or Yankees Vandal that will do most of the damage for Team Liquid here. And it's basically what they rely on to not have just a thrifty loss. Kiko's position, they have no idea and walked past him too. Oh, wait a minute. Does he double back? There's no way they check behind. Missed it, he gives the call that they've crossed over. He's gonna have to go all the way around, and that's the first pick. That's a weapon to be collected in case he runs out of place. Another shot found, and Kamo oh, and Stoxo drop to feet. the ground. And Kiko takes this round all to himself. Using the toxic screen to his own favor from the enemy side of Koi. What's another bite? Give him the full ace, because this guy deserves it. Five points of health, and he wants five kills, and he gets it! Kiko, a masterclass on the jet, makes his mark on VCT MEA. Icebox has been his playground. The young blood coming in here for Team Le Liquid. The entire reason they won on Icebox the first time around, and he's pulling out all the stops. And a timeout for a timeout. Koi to trade theirs in this time around. Ah, wondering where did it all go wrong? But the thing is, Koi, they were just outplayed, outpositioned there. They didn't necessarily do anything wrong other than not getting those trades in that one v Indeed, indeed. And it's again the the old tried story for Team Liquid, especially this story, this uh, tournament where they've relied on high flying performances and Kiko coming in again, getting more confidence with Blaze, with the operator now, you know, coming into play. There's a lot more for them, a lot more that can help them facilitate a map victory. But Koi like to keep things close. Like we said, they get an inch, they'll take it a mile. Mm -hmm. And that's what Team Liquid need to be careful of. You get, yes, you get a round win, but you can't let this get away from you. You definitely can't. I think what is interesting though, I guess knowing that Team Liquid, they've played against them before, but it did work. Last time they would continue to pressure just using Starkso's abilities on that harbor over towards that B site, kind of cycling the pressure up with those cascades, denying that information right off the gate, and, and pressuring the fact that maybe someone had lurked up. We haven't actually seen that same sort of conditioning coming out from the side of Koi. And sure, it could be the question of maybe they expect Team Liquid to have done their homework and maybe. for it not to be as ex oh. Kiko with the Operator. First blood, camo no more. That's, all, that's all she wrote, that's it. Kiko, um, I think he's got more things to write for this round, at least. Spotted, drop backed, updraft, also spotted. So Starks are looking at this upper angle. Who found who first though? That's the question. Killjoy is over towards mid though as well. Might face off soon. Waiting for a bit of that information. Again, cutting that noise here. You see, pulled back here, Nats over towards A. Could definitely be uh, Killjoy head to head, but with uh, Yampi dropping back to this A site, could have given Shados a clear way of infiltrating. Just passive plays. I mean, Enzo's just Boys looking to play off of that Hunter's Fury based off the tap. Nowhere to run! Kiko having to balance multiple angles here. Hunter's Fury not quite finding anyone, but it's Gravinho instead to mark off Kiko. And he keeps on giving. And suddenly Team Liquid, after having an advantage, is back to falling ways. Nats tries to square things up, but Shado's not going to let it happen. With 25 seconds to spare, Koi is on the site to plant. And with Hunter's Fury enabled, they realize they've got a few more seconds to spare. No hurry here. Nats for the clutch. Spike planted. And with the playing against three players, of Koi is not going to be an easy one. Down to 70 points of health. He's got the Viper's Pit, but I don't think he's going to want to use it. This is a difficult one. Koi moving all of their players into one corner. Okay, Viper's Pit could make all the difference here because they're all just staring down that angle right now. But it's just simple. They'll just move in together. And that's not even capable of finding one out of the three. So Koi, close up the gap the even further with one round to spare at this half. 
Great adjustment. Again, that utility usage coming out from the harbor, the cascade just to allow you to scale up. And even if you don't opt to take those angles, take the positioning there, just denying that information over towards Team Liquid and just so much patience. Yeah, Enzo had even thrown you out. Track them down. Oh, Barbara. All laughs, all giggles over there in the coach's booth. We love it. We absolutely love Stop it. That. Team Liquid, though, on the other hand, after their own timeout, they didn't quite get their round win. That's what they were hoping for, and they didn't quite deliver. Kiko switches up his angle with that off crater. That's an interesting one. I mean, you can be quick to get out, and you have the ability to find those trades there. You can see the other two players watching towards Bell. Aldron is going to figure out this position, though. So Kiko forced to back off, having to expend the dash away. But good clearance coming out from Koi to deny that map control, deny that space. Putting a little bit more of a threat over towards that A site. Now you see the swap being made here. Kiko leaning over towards B. As Kitchen watching over into two, maybe into the window as well. But Aldron doesn't see anything here. So a signal for Enzo to fall off. But this is, again, similar to what we saw on the B site. They wait out for that clear utility on the side of Team Liquid before moving back in. Yeah, but Koi, this is this could be perfect for them. Because they fake towards the B site, it's baiting Team Liquid to stick to that area while it's the A site is exactly where they're going. And it's always Stark, so every time. And it's worked. But the fact that Kiko gets a pick in mid will be able to stop Stark so from rotating over. Enzo still at the back of the fight. Is gonna be a menace, but Shadows able to stop Mystic from helping. Is gonna put Enzo in a 1v3 situation run. before his team arrives. So how patient can you play it? How are you gonna decide what you do here? Do you interrupt the spike left. from being planted? This might be the call. So far, he's done so. But with the lockdown enabled, Koi spike can get planted. the spike down, no problem. And Yampi bought the fake over towards yeah. B. That lockdown for yeah. the defenders was used earlier. They don't have it as an entry back in. Dimensional Drift giving the call that Yampi is really close to this fight. So Shadow is able to re-swing it, but Yampi is quicker to the fight. Camo exiting the Dimensional Drift now, putting Kiko in this 1v2. Upper angle covered, but he's got too many positions to think of. He's got no idea where everybody's hiding. They could be far, they could be close, they could be wide, they could be low. And Koi square things up in the final moment of this half. Six to six. This game could go anywhere. Snowman's land out here. Every opportunity for both teams, and it all relies on the second pistol replays from this last round. And man, the distraction game, the big brain miss, and the calling coming up from Shadow Stark. So just being that instigator on B so yeah. constantly. Because when you do see that harbor, sure, you've got the toxic screen always coming down there from Grubinho over towards that B site, defaulting it. Typical, doing the conditioning, but it's when you see Starks' utility that you're like, okay, the rest of the team should be with him. That's where we'd be looking towards, because you normally would expect if it was a fake, Rubinho would be the one trying to pop his util. But entering the second half here, Team Liquid on attack, not quite able on the defense to pull off their game plan, but on attack, maybe they can Boxes be a bit more preemptive with it and force the pace out themselves. The thing is, Koi, they use Starkso's utility just so much more aggressively on that harbor. It fully walked out down mid now. Koi have such a read. There's only a bot watching this back line, so it will read it, but can you expect three players to be holding it out? One defending the site is Shados, but now he's got reinforcements and the lacks of Shadow. Wall coming through, but a Shadow to find a pick, so the plant won't come through straight away. Mystic getting on it, but three players on the flank are gonna cause a world of trouble unless Nats interrupts them. That's the first, but he's got two more to deal with, and I don't think he knows Mystic is turning behind to help. But it gives so much more space for Koi on site itself. Grubinho having to reposition, he's been nestled out for Stark, so use that time to move in himself. It's a balancing of positions that Koi want to crunch on them. They've been able to do so successfully though so far, but they're lacking in numbers here, Team Liquid. And Enzo's pick here was the, oh, the absolute oh, vitality. Still, it's Grubinho all to himself, and he's able to clean it up against his opposing Viper. All he has to do is the defuse, and he's got ample time to do it. What? A pinch coming in from Koi. Smiles on the camera here as well. Props to the entire team. And the pistol was so important when you're tied up to find that initial advantage. Oh, disgusting flick from Shadow. Yeah. That is unreal. Pretty quick One so wow. well done. I mean, and then you also have, I love the fact that you're pushing out 
towards mid short. It is a gamble to expect that A push out from <laughs> Team Liquid. We, get the, we got the close cam kissing uh, his, uh, his teammates' <laughs> hand. But, but ultimately, it, the fact that there is also Shados just lying in wait with his KJ yeah. utility, just buying all that time now, heading into the next. Different look. For sure. Double stack up here to his left-hand side for the attack. It's Stark, so might be facing it. He's got a Sheriff. And a, no, he's got a Judge. What am I talking yeah, about? Yeah, they've got both angles covered, so that distance being closed means a little hot. This mid push from Team Liquid is what is going to take up Koi's time for a little bit. Starkso's even eager to go for a pick. Shade has somehow lost a big chunk of his health. Okay, just a little bit more patience here, Starkso. He's itching. He really is. Oh, and it could be brilliant! Two kills for nothing, and he gets away with it. Scott's free. I have the spike. Uh, that is crazy. Hey, I think it was a little combo with the uh, the shock dart that went out. Grabinho's going for a whole wrap around here, though, and I don't think they're waiting Timing. for it. No, they are, because who's wrapping around oh, who? The wall. Enzo's right behind him. Oh, he's got no idea, though! Oh, Bring out the knife, mate. I know you want to make sure he can get another kill out of it, but Spike ends up not doing B. so. He knows Nats is nearby, but he's just brought Team Liquid in some sort of contention. Oh, well, Koi, an even left. greater spot. They don't know where Yampi is right now. And that's Nats pulling the trigger so fast to turn around. Is this doable? 20 seconds. They might have sight control, but Shadow's nearby. Recon not there yet, but he's got a couple of shotguns that could deny the default spike planting positions. 12 seconds. Close to Yampi's feet. And Shadows with the upper ground. Yampi with a double has put things all in contention. Five seconds. The spike can be interrupted as Camo is right behind. Koi continue with their streak. Team Liquid made it extremely expensive, though, here for Koi. And I just can't believe that recovery back towards B main as well. Difficult. Grabinho was left on an island. And just the fact that they had no idea where Yampi was just kept the rest of the team from going to help him out. And the big reason why Team Liquid were able to co close closest because of Nats is like shots because of this. He turned 180 degrees and recovered in time. Yampi as well, double on the Sheriff. For the old players from Team Liquid doing a splendid job to keep them in contention, but not quite the round for them. But it does mean that Koi have a weak bonus round now. Nice wall to go and slow down this push. Five players here from Team Liquid present towards B main. He goes so close to the action here. <laughs> There's no Stark, so it was right on the other side of the Toxic screen, but he does back here. off in time. And Koi back off completely. <laughs> it's completely like they want none of it. It's like they already know that this round is that's it. There's no pick to be had. There's a gamble maybe in case an A-site hit does come through, but they're just not willing to give away orbs to Team Liquid. Uh, not at this point, just trying to play numbers. Starkso back into the smoke now. He hears the orb tap. How much realistically can you do here? Maybe get one, maybe. but then you're done and dusted. I mean, what Grabinho did in, on the Ghost on the previous map was disgusting and hardly replicable. It's unlikely. He's just trying to live by that time right now. Yeah, just trying to live. Koi going for a massive flank, but it's read by Yampi. Oh, and shot down by Ghost himself. Stark, so showing his presence by stabbing at the wall. And the outlet from Camo has done damage. Wait a minute, this might be doable for them, especially if they're closing reload. in on him, but he hasn't been able to reload because he spent the time taking that flash out. But Koi, their wrap is taking a long time through mid, and Team Liquid still Entered. should be able to close this out, given that they've got rifles galore. Shadow's got an upgrade. Did Grabino spotted here too. One snake bite down for the count. Shados was hoping they were playing out in Snowman, at least deep in that position where he could have gotten a kill, but unlucky with the timing. All three players back towards Snowman here, and a recon available for Enzo. Last player standing. And with Shadows dropping, the only one with a gun, there's nothing you can do. Eager to pick it up here, Grabinho will be greeted by Lev to the heart. And Team Liquid get, get guns, and they get around. Good here. Again, the back and forth, right? You expect Team Liquid to win that one out now. 30 seconds left. Seen the save coming in here, Koi. You got the fact that Operator now up for Camo. How aggressive does he get with it though right now? Set up, okay, he's got one of those TPs to head all the way back over towards B if he needs to make a quick rotation. Gonna go aggressive with this off. 
Very aggressive, actually. But that's not the position that's being covered from Team Liquid right now. Instead, it's the upper ground level and taking a few more seconds to push towards the left-hand side entry of A. But Camo, by that time, repositions. Now, the operator has been integral for Team Liquid on defense. Koi, not so much. I get to see Camo holding that big gun. Back, though. Spotted out probably two, I think, would be the guess coming out from Shadow. Here. Just based on what was shot Starting out and through. what he was able to see. Plan Here. B for Camo. Enabled. Rubinho still saying, nobody here, guys. Stick to your positions. The threat is imminent. Close to this action. All Team Liquid players grouped up together. It's going to be a five-man collapse, and Camo no time oh. to get out of it. Stark, so instead to find the trade onto Enzo, and he will be trying to close up the gap even more, and he's able to get them all! Triple kill for Stark, so Shadow enters the fight Five. with an Odin. He's being incredible with it! Bullets all over the Team Liquid players, and the round goes to Koi. Stark shows utility, an unsung hero within this matchup as well. Those reckonings have been absolutely deadly for Team Liquid. And it just buys so much time. A timeout to be called this time around. Both of these teams have been really good for calling out these timeouts as soon as things get out of hand. As soon as they feel that things should be going their way and there's some sort of misinterpretation of the opposing play, they get on the case straight out of the bat. These coaches are on it. They can't afford a team to gain unnecessary leads, unnecessary streaks. And Koi right now is not, has been able to shut down Team Liquid's buy opportunity. Economical reset. And they cannot let them run too far away. You can't blame Emil bringing out this timeout. No. Looks like going to be a force here on side of Team Liquid from the buys that we can see on our screens. No, you guys don't get the chance to see that right now. But there is that Viper's Pit available here for Nats. So that opportunity to try and cut off likely A site if I mean, you could tro choose towards B main, but I think A is typically the more standard yeah. one if you're gonna use that early Viper's Pit and run it with that Spectre in pocket. But again, it all depends on if Team Liquid are even able to find it that really site does. in the first place. It really does. Team Liquid scratching their heads here. Not too far away, seven to nine, not difficult, but they're trailing behind not only in rounds, but in the map score as well. They're on the back foot. Koi win this map, it's game over. Out of kickoff. And what's big here is we saw that speed up in pacing coming up from Team Liquid in the last round. I want to see that again because they were able to punish Camo on the angle before he could TP out that time. They've got to replicate it. Well, forcing into this round. Only a couple of pistols for Team Liquid, but hoping they can secure it nevertheless. It's a, it's a gamble. <laughs> Let's just say that. It's a big yeah. gamble. If it doesn't work, Portal closed. they'll be in a world of hurt. They might be confident in this one. It's a game of chicken right now. It really is. Patience across Boys the board. Awesome. This looks a lot more like the, you know, the coin team liquid that we saw before. Oh, big time. But this time Camo has got an operator and is looking at yeah. the right direction. Team Liquid move in here. There's a big chance they'll be trading out kills in Corey's favor. I'll join finding out Grabinho, but doesn't give a chance for Camo's position to be telegraphed. Do they know he's kept onto yeah. the operator? They should. The walk up towards the left side though is huge. But Camo needs to figure out whether he switches his position or hopes that Grubinho can hold his ground. TP out. That allows Grubinho to delay the push with snake bites as he drops back and calls for reinforcements. Let's have our angle here for Kiko as well. We're not seeing the same explosive left. entries from him now on the attack. And we're talking about 30 seconds in the making, and Camo's already got in a pick. That's really important. Enzo not able to put that Hunter's Fury to good oh. use. There's still a player in yellow that's wrapping all the way around. Look at Grubinho. He hasn't been spotted. Mystic doubles up, but he's jumping on top of the box. That is immaculate. Bring him one to life, but they need to get the spike down. Two versus three is Mystic. His turn. The tide's completely in their favor. Right now, you've got a Cascade and Cove to work with. Right And Shadow. Might be able to find a gap across this smoke as soon as it falls. Shadow not able to treat it or trade it. Inwards, Mystic down in a 1v2. Oh, it's so tough. He's walled off as well. He's going to have to go all the way around from yellow, break the wall, and that's going to buy so much time from Team Liquid here. I'm just going to save the operator. He has to. Every that's round got has to been be so the close. round for Team Liquid. Getting themselves an extra one. Leashing up onto Koi, pulling in their direction, not letting them go. 
And again, changing that tempo, trying to catch out Camo on that. Sure, again, we haven't seen the same sort of explosivity that we saw from Kiko as we did the first time that Team Liquid and Koi faced off. But they didn't need it. Mystic going vertical there with the wall. The full battle stage situation to completely flip that when we saw Shadow get two with the Hunter's Fury. Mystic has popped off in so many occasions today, but this one takes the cake. Uses his own wall to find a couple of kills and jumping over yellow as well. Uh, it's been insane. Emil can be proud of that one and happy for the Mystic pickup. Old Fnatic boy back in the VCT where he should belong. And Team Liquid now off the back of the previous round success. are actually playing a little bit more aggressive into mid. yampi has gone up quite far forward and he's being greeted by a couple of players of Koi as well. Shadow showing himself, but he's got the likes of Shados to assist him. Nats as well in the proximity to help out Yampi. It's an off angle. I don't think they'll expect that. The Aldron and Ryan will even check it. I think it has. And Nats will be in trouble. Shados trades it out, but in the meantime, it buys time for Team Liquid to push across this A site. And Kiko's done so much. It's a two versus three favoring the Blue Stallions. And Grubinho and Camo trading behind. I mean, that's exactly what Team Liquid wanted right now. Two taking the upper angle, but the big thing was just to gain that space here on A. Camo looking to find information for his team, but it does leave Grubinho oh. exposed to the elements. And then Mystic is a hell of an element. One versus three, and Camo, he hasn't found many clutches this tournament so far. Two flashes. Is it enough for him? No, it's not, because Mystic is lurking in the shadows, and he finds the opportune moment to peek. It's always above you. Nine to nine now as we tie things up here once again. Now, Koi on the back foot. Don't have the money to buy into this round. Meanwhile, for Team Liquid, starting cycle up into quite a few of these ultimates. Again, you still have Nats with that Viper's Pit. That was disgusting. It's insane what, what Kika was able to do on that A site. The distraction from mid, the push from A, all of it together just put so much pressure onto Koi. <laughs> Emil was just waiting. What's going to happen? Are they going to close it out? Two fists up, ready to fight. He doesn't want to be too early to the celebration. I respect that. Fair enough. Can't get too ahead of ourselves. It's time out to be called now here from the side of Koi. And where are things going wrong? Yeah, that's the big question here. Uh, it, fe it feels like Team Liquid have been overwhelming them left, right, and center. Koi, it's, it's been a few rounds. Even the round that they did want, it did come close. Uh, they need to find something their way, whether that is some sort of an aggression play. They just need to stop losing players early. I think that's the fact of the matter. But for now, it seems that like it's going to be a difficult endeavor for them. A real difficult one, considering how far behind they are economically. It would be nice to see Koi playing a little bit more forward. I think Team Liquid have found the advantage as far as just, you know, Yampi and Nats being on those lurk positions, yeah. drawing so much of the attention of Koi away from those sites. And then that's the green light for the rest of Team Liquid of course, to move on in and then help with those crunches. Let's see if this timeout prompted a change of pace. Stark so close by with a judge. Aldro spotting him, but he oh. goes aggressive. Kiko's got it all locked and covered. Stark so not going to be finding any kills this one. Fake no TP Game out. Through. It's going to send that away now. But again, you've only got a sheriff in hand. So patient. Here. Clearing out every angle. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, man. Camo doesn't have much to his exposal, apart from his teammate Grubinho to the back, and he's only got a classic shot dart towards Camo's feet, and he could just back out. Although, what Koi do have going for them is a lot of play nearby, and Shadow's able to close up the gap with the Stingers, but not good enough. Team Liquid clean up the house. Andalusia flawless and double digits. Crowd chanting in the back here for Team Liquid as they find the momentum into the second half. Three rounds chained together here for the Stallions. And no need to use any of these ultimates quite yet either. Oh now, yeah, they built up a lengthy arsenal they got of ultimates. They got bank to fall back <laughs> on right now. And meanwhile for Koi, you've only got the lockdown to try and contest. It feels like Team Liquid have got Koi red at this point. They, they expected someone to push through there. Kiko there and waiting. Didn't hesitate a second to pull that trigger. Okay, Russian again though. Ah, burning alive! I really like, I know that 
Koi haven't been too aggressive for the orbs in particular, but you throw down that snake bite and it makes you just so vulnerable when you're trying to back off towards sight when you do play that aggressive angle. But this gamble stack here. It has to be a gamble stack. There is no other way. They need to win the fights in, in terms of gun trades. Because if they leave too many Team Liquid players alive, the post point will be nigh impossible with the ultimates they have available. Starting to fall off now, cycling these smokes back up. Knowing that there's a lockdown waiting on the other side. You should run. And Koi, with the placement that they have, the treatment is the same. They do drop back, but Shados has got a lockdown available of his own. Yeah, but look at this mid positioning. They're waiting for the pinch to come in. Welcome it's just a matter of timing, but the lockdown for now will keep them at bay. Yampi aggresses forwards, but they, so that means the mid push will come in a little bit quicker than they would have expected. Stark so on the good shot here from Koi, but Kiko on the flank will not miss. Snake bites on the spike. No one can defuse. Grabinho bringing his team back, but is it enough? They need to find more, and with them, this Viper's hit. It is Mystic's domain. Uh, Camo and Grabinho have actually turned it all around, but Mystic has done so much for Team Liquid. All he has to do is do it again. One shot, not bound. It's Camo to find Mystic's head. And with plenty of time to defuse, Koi square things up for yet another time. They stop the bleeding. That play was so good coming out from Team Liquid, though. The two there towards mid, knowing that there was going to be another lockdown in response. And they weren't going to let Koi take that space. But Grubinho doing so much with that late rotation from the B side, being to ca able to catch out Enzo, just changes the game in there. Ten now. <laughs> oh, dear. oh, dear. That snuck in. Uh, but still, it's uh, double digits across the board, and you can tell how enthusiastic Koi are with that one. They needed it. And we saw, we talked about how hard it was for them to win that round, given how many ultimates Team Liquid had. Facing Swarm Grenade. Absolutely. Two of them expended. And then he only needed the one lockdown here from Shade Osprey. Into the next round, a face off here with the Operator. Starks is nearby. It's his cheeky anger to hold. He hasn't been here on a buy. No, he hasn't. Is it checked? Enzo is not going to check it, is he? I mean, with an op oh, there, Oh, he is! Spend. And it's an upper oh, angle, so Starks so wasn't ready for it. Camo has to draw back here, and so does Grubinho. He's in trouble, but doesn't vacate the area soon enough. Mystic, wonderful shot, and Camo sticks around. He's been slowed. They expect someone to be around. The Aldro not clearing it, only now making its way. I think now he's, they ping this position, but he doesn't have a TP to get out of there. It is set over towards orange, but you do see Team Liquid, they decide to back up anyways, Camo. It was yeah. important to keep that space, the rotation now being made. Seeing pings from the defenders as well, though, knowing that there is danger over towards that A site, they could have walked through with the lack of utility there. Instead, you've just got the Nano Swarms to delay that plant, but not close enough. Koi aren't going to be able to hear that left. signal. I think the callers are already been made here for Koi. I don't think they can afford to go for a fight here. Otherwise, they'll be really far behind. Mm -hmm. So they're going to drop back. They're going to allow the spike plant to take place, the round for Team Liquid, allow them, their opponents to gain the lead, and that's got to hurt in their heart and their gut, giving their opponents the lead after they themselves have just brought the equalizer. But They've got so to. It's testy when the money situation is just that rough to deal with knowing that you need everything to work in your favor, because even worse would be to lose all of those guns. Let 100%. Team Liquid head to 11, and then you're fighting out for match point without anything in your pocket. Cast those feelings aside. Take an extra breath. Use this time towards this end of the round to discuss what you can be doing the next one. For now, their task is to keep themselves alive. Team Liquid on the chase. Uh, it's not that they can afford to go after them too much. They've got another buy in them, yes, if they do lose a weapon, but it's still a long way to go. Team Liquid, the lead, and two rounds away from finding themselves into a third map. Resurrection here for Mystic, available. Looking over on the side of Koi, again, there is going to be Viper's Pit here. So you see the judge coming in, now expecting that to come out early. You know what excites me the most here, Ash? The Kiko Operator. On attack. Yeah, <laughs> it's scary. If you're Koi right now, you don't want to be faced up against it. No, he'll be so aggressive with it. But the, the Viper's Pit at the very least cuts off the angle right really now. Does. Rubinho has to dodge the Owl Drone, though. Great position. Op revealed over towards that B site as well. Look how 
quick the rotations are coming in. And you just have Yamp, he's just been sitting at mid this whole time here. He's been chilling. He knows that there's an alarm button nearby and it doesn't want to trigger it. He wants to make sure he's in the silent position as long as possible. At the same time, a lot of extremity control here for Koi because you also have Camo pushed up towards Nest on A. He's just sent out his TP as well. So he's gone out for the lurk. This is all Yampi. Yampi catching off Shados. His patience is rewarded. The Starks is also nearby. He himself is going to try and be an Ennis, but he's let them all cross forwards. The Aldrin, uh, the alarm bot won't be triggered as Shados has found his demise. And Team Here's Liquid on the front foot as they enter this B site. Hunter's Fury from Shadow trying to deny any of these players, but this time he's unsuccessful in finding anyone. Find some chip damage onto, Shadow, onto one of these players, but it's quickly replenished back into life. Kika holding off the mid play, and that's exactly where Koi want to play into. And he, that's exactly where Kiko falls. The timing there is blind. Oh, Grabinho, that is dirty! And another three versus three, Koi might have a chance here. Shadow on the off angle! Enzo didn't expect that at all. And Koi, the two players, Shadow and Starkso, so playing this one together. Nanoswarm can deny them for a little bit, but it's already the fuse halfway. They might be sticking up a Mystic from behind. They've got no idea! A Mystic saves the day yet again! The star player for Team Liquid today does it one more time! Nail in the coffin now, hitting this match point here for Team Liquid. Looking to take us to the decider in this best of three in Group A. Now, looking over, or in Group B, sorry, but now looking over towards Koi. It's a tough buy. You've got two Guardians alongside the Vandal, and then you've also yeah. got the Bulldog. Yampy's. Okay, whoa. <laughs> that energy. Love to hear it for Team Liquid. Oh, they've only got one round left. Him one. and Mini Boo got to go on a screen thing, man. <laughs> One round left, and it's potentially split. Two rounds for Koi, potentially overtime. The thing is, Koi, it, they struggle on the defense. Right? This is their weak point. It's really the attack, and they didn't find the advantage that they were looking for in the first half. Yeah, they tend to find strength exactly where they can find the most pace, but Camo, that is beautiful. Oh. Finds himself back in on top, and the fact that Starkso gets one, albeit the resurrection, Koi has still got the numbers advantage. Oh. Heal coming up here as well, that recon already used. Still an owl drone to work with. Yampi on the luck though, this could be crucial. There's nothing to, uh, to alarm Koi here from this flank. No, nothing towards Boiler. It's only the alarm bot over underneath too, but he chooses. Tube itself instead. He hasn't positioned himself there before. So all Team Liquid are doing right now is trying to buy the time to wrap around here, let Yampi get into a great position to change the tide of this round. Scouting good here for Camo at the very least. Camo's shown his ground. They know he's altered nearby, and Team Liquid look to run away from it. Oh my goodness, Gripping, you're there and waiting, but it's got to go. Camo to peek out from the shadows, get so many kills from it. And out of nowhere, Koi on 11. Such a read coming out from Koi, expecting it now. Uh, oh, honestly, it took a little bit too long for comfort yeah. for me. I think Yampi has gotten way too much value on his mid lurks, and Koi haven't really given that respect wow. and paying enough attention. But what shots it's to my... come out from Camo? The hype. <laughs> Barber is like, how? Yeah, how? Just simply how? Camo rejuvenated back on the server exactly where Koi wanted him to be and the bright moment as well one round between themselves and overtime now for team liquid you could say the same thing but with a map win they'd love it yeah, be holding the off here too team liquid buying into that one for the sentinel the attacking side again, this mid control here instead. Nats is the one on that kitchen lurk. It's Koi that's aggressing though. They're the ones taking the flank control over this B site. And I think Yampi could get caught off it if he's not careful enough. Shados wins out his own trade as well. And Koi, in a moment of milliseconds, are the ones favored to win this round and take us to OT and Team Liquid. They're shaking where they stand, sweating all over. It's a three versus five for them to secure a map win. It's all up to Kiko here on site. Kiko's got the blades. Only just enable the dash. Snakebite nearby, but avoided by Kiko. Wanting to go even further. He doesn't really have reinforcements. Mystic's held back. <gasps> And Enzo going all the way around. Kiko no more. Koi might actually have done it. Mystic on top. Has to drop back. 
It's not all done until Koi are able to deliver this defuse. And Mystic is so good on these clutches so far. He's able to find one. Shade just drops it right back up in his favor. Enzo, it's a one on three. And they're sticking the DQ, stopping it. But no! It's Shados that was on it! We're destined for overtime on map number two! What a cove, what a body block coming oh out here God. for Koi. 12 to 12 in the first overtime round. We're seeing a glass cannon operator in the hands of Kiko here as well as we swap sides with Team Liquid back on the defense and Koi on the attack. I... Oh my god, we almost went to a map three right there. I really like the fact that Koi are taking the supremacy on their on, on their own defense to take the oh, initiating fights remains. themselves, dictate how the round is played out. Don't allow Team Liquid to set up the way they would have liked themselves. Nice. I mean nice. for Koi, they were giving too much respect on the defense initially. At the beginning of the second half, they weren't taking any of that control. It was a free playground for Yampi to roam around. What they have to do is replicate how much success they've had on the attack and use their learnings from the defense to get themselves two rounds in a row. The same could be said about Team Liquid. Two consecutive ones on each side of the field is what is needed to pick up a map win oh. here. He knows, but... He's run out of a dash, so he can't play as aggressive anymore. No. Walking over now towards B. Opportunity to still stall with some of these snake bites here for Nats. Yeah, I think you can see how important it is for Team Liquid that Koi don't push too far forwards. Nano Swarm's very deep in, so yeah. Nats comfortable to hold back for now. Snake bite and poison cloud enabled. And that spray starts so down. Team Liquid. All they do now is rotate around. They know Koi is nearby and they get someone on the flank, perhaps. Ahead. But Koi are patient. And while they are yeah. patient, in the meantime, it's Team Liquid that get a pick after pick. Three players off in Snowman. If there's no smoke covering it, they're doomed. Portal closed. Camo's got to make the difference. Enzo is just left. off his screen. And Yampi finds himself the backstab, and that's all is needed. Team Liquid might actually be getting a very clean round here in overtime. Nats with another one, making it two for him this round. Grabinho is all that remains. Doubles up with 18 seconds. Surely not. And 30 points of health. This is looking nigh impossible. With a plant, he gets the pick. Ten seconds left. Will it be enough, though, as they're chasing right after him, not allowing him to do it? He gets one kill, goes for another spike plant, but Kiko's right behind him with a shorty to the back. 13-12. Map point opportunity here for Team Liquid for a second time. Great stall, great delay coming out from Nats and just Stark so being mowed down there, breaking that cove right off the gate. No safe plant in sight. And that's also the trade-off. Sure, you get the cove here for within the harbor for Stark so, and then for Mystic, you've got that sage wall if you want to opt for that B plant. Otherwise, too <laughs> Yeah, he's having fun. But um, otherwise, it's too dangerous to plant there over B. But the Cove takes a lot less damage to break versus that wall. Yeah, importantly for Team Liquid, spirits are high. They're not the ones on the hot seat. It's Koi instead. I mean, look, both of them are under pressure. Let's not beat around the bush here. Koi aggressing, taking down the bot. Some information now denied from the attacking side. They also know that Koi have struggled here on defense, right? So feeling confident after win winning their defending round. Cascade deep in mid does put pressure on Team Liquid to look at it in case someone walks past it. But the push towards A means there's a pick per side. But then you've also got delay here. Koi, with these mollies, are looking to just force Team Liquid to stay in towards Maze. Nats on lurk and control, while the rest of Team Liquid just traverse into A. Looks like Koi want to deal with Nats here, and they're wary of such presence. In the swing, Rubinho is actually so close to this. I don't think Nats can expect the barrel. it. And he goes, and it's Stark, so that gets the pick instead. Spike planted now for Team Liquid, but they're at a numbers deficit. Kiko has to go for something early. He feels the need, he needs to go for a pick. Cloud burst to the left hand side as he aggresses forwards, finds some damage, dashes out. Enough of that fight. Still, it's Starks on the other end that tries to find a shot, but does bait him. But it's Kiko to come out on top. Mystic, the brilliance of this man to come alive with the best moments for Team Liquid. This round could be it, unless Grabinho can say otherwise. But there's three players spread apart. There's no way you can find them all at the same time. Kiko with the final blow. We're going to split. We're going to a third map because Team Liquid are not done with Koi yet. 14 to 12, the second overtime for us today, but what a way to close things out here. Kiko really 